Yes, I am the publisher. I am a publisher that uh, of an house from Bangladesh called Romicron Publishing House, and I am the director of international affairs in the academic and creative publishers association of Bangladesh. I have a question on something. Uh, the education-based publication business in our country is greatly affected by a subsection of the law that bans all kind of supplementary and related <coughs> books to the education. And as well as the coaching centers, private tuition, and house tutors. As you know, the publishers are not business owners. We want to contribute to strengthen the backbone of our country, and education is the backbone of our country also. We know that not all the children can cope up with the work together, and we need to help them by publishing books from different level of understanding that fits every student's specifically with their education. And in, there is no textbook in the world that can fit all the students. That's why we need teachers and supplement books. So my question is, is this a very law? As we are facing this from 1980, that was introduced until the great age, and now it is extending after 2017 until grade 12. That means all the educational books published by the publishers that related to education actually will kill I think it will kill 100% of related supplemental books in the whole industry. Thank you. I, I really, again, I really don't think that the question should be whether the law is uh, a correct law or not. Once it has been passed, it has been passed, and uh, then it has to be enforced. Uh, the question is how did we get to that law? What type of problem were they going to solve? And uh, if we would like to have that law repealed, uh, how do we seriously understand what in the first place drove them to coming up with that law? And then work with them, the, the, the issue of language uh, that Ren was speaking about is critical because there is a certain language that got them there. I don't think there is a vindictive attempt by policy to wipe out the industry. There is a problem that they are trying to solve and we can only survive if we help them solve that problem. Of course you have gotten to the show stage now where it is happening. What you then need to do is probably to look at the constitution of the country and what the, whether that law is constitutional. You need to look at the other departments other than education and say what laws, what objectives do they have which relate to that objective. If there are contradictions that you see, then that's the next step where you then go to something like the Department of National Planning or the Department of Policy Cohesion and say, here is what this department is trying to achieve, here is the national objective, this is how it is undermined by this, how do we harmonize those laws, and then try and get a solution out of that. Uh, that would be my limited view. I don't understand the situation fully, but, but I would generalize it that way. See, in every society, there will always be a certain spring, a sprinkling of unscrupulous elements. We have faced this problem in NCRT, that of piracy, and we had to tackle it administratively. There is no other way out. Because not everybody would follow the basic norms, not everybody would not follow the right trade practices, so this has to be done. The books that NCRT publishes are very low in its costing. Sometimes earlier they were subsidized also, but now they are not subsidized. But if you go to the market, it, the book would be available at five to six times. So naturally, once the books are released, many publishers, distributors, just put them in their <laughs> stock and wait for some time before they are released, they are not available, even if they are really already distributed properly. So it has to be handled even in education administration, the leadership, and the point was raised about this, uh, I think the chairman also raised the point 
that not everybody in the ministries, in ministries people do not understand the language that we speak in the academic institution. I had the rare privilege of having spent five years in the ministry as a senior director also. And then I headed two organizations. I fully endorse that it is not always possible to convince the bureaucracy what type of actions are really necessary to smoothen the system and get over the problem, the one which you are mentioning. But we have to be on our own. We have to strengthen our internal mechanism. And in education, I would always talk about so long as our systems follow certain norms, values, and principles, our problems should be minimized. There is no other way out. Uh. Thanks. Uh, the things we this uh, you this uh, you uh, advised. Uh, I know that uh, we are discussing with the uh, authorities for last uh, couple of years, and uh, of course we are going to uh, uh, recommend some thing what they are planning to do at the end of the day what they want, and uh, we are going to. Uh, one with them. Of course, I did not find any law, any law that uh, other than other country like Singapore and uh, also in uh, India. So I see many publishers still uh, publishing the same kind of book and the education system now in our country is totally creative education system that is called and uh, is inherited from Australian syllabus. So uh, there is no open-ended question, there is no question in the book, so there is absolutely no way to answer from the book. But the book can discuss on the subject, and it is always we think that it is the extension of the subjects and the points that is discussed in the textbook. So, in what law actually prohibits? Uh, in the, is there any special IP rights law that means intellectual property that educational publisher they are actually uh, infringement there is infringement taking place or something else? I don't understand this part. So if uh, I also was about to ask the question in the IP section, but I think that this is the right section to ask the question mm -hmm. that is the strength in the education publication sector. So I think the IPA can, what is my expectation from the, uh, all over the uh, world and the publishers who are educating the nations on their own, because sometimes we publish books for the international publishers, international uh, countries. Now we are also focusing, being a Bangladeshi publisher, we are also focusing educational books for the Africa and uh, Singapore also as well. We are working with a couple of publishers called Macmillan is one of them, uh, in uh, uh, the Marshall Cavendish in uh, Singapore. So we understand this, uh, Singapore, if Singapore can work with it, that India works with it, why not our country? And why not minister? Because I saw the IP section, India follows the rules of UK, USA, and Netherlands, the law they follow. So all the whole laws are uh, taking decisions by the court or something, by the, uh, the practicing law that are in the other countries. So in that case, why it's not happening? And why not IPA is uh, taking a strength, strong initiative all over the world, regarding including our country, uh, to ease the total things? Because it needs really a discussion and the matter of policy from international perspective and the local perspective as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry, yeah? Okay. Please. Uh, we have concluded that we need a support system for educational publishers. Are they really serious about that? Just want to know. They're just, all the work is being in routine. So this support system, the way they are following, and the way they have been told systematically how you develop things, I don't think this is being followed. So I think some support system here is also required. I am Sarojini Pritam, I am Vice President, Authors Guild of India. Thank you. Thank you much. I, I totally agree with you, and uh, I'm, um, as the DPF, I'm, I'm internationally uh, in many countries, and I think uh, that education is nearly everywhere the same. That 
my family. They have the same problems and they have the same issues, a little bit different, 20% is different, or in some states it's, it's more different. But I think we understand each other very well, and I think uh, to set up a support system should be very, uh, should be possible, yes. I will talk with the FBA about this. Are there other questions, recommendations, or yes, questions? Yes, very important talking about freedom to choose. We know that teachers are the cornerstone of uh, any educational system, and when we're talking to governments, we are always trying to make them see about neutrality and diversity. We as a publishers, we are not only uh, producing content for students, but we're producing a lot of content for teachers, and we do a lot, a lot of training for them. So they are the most important thing in education. They are not robots, fortunately. They are really our hope for all our educational system. Thank you. I, I think I have one last question, Radnish, to you, uh, because uh, Professor Singh uh, said we have to redefine our business, and I think that's something uh, I hear some, sometimes. And I think we, we, as a publisher, can give an answer on, on this. So, can you give your view on this recommendation? So, uh, I guess the redefinition, a uh, uh, little of what I understood. Uh, is, is essentially on, on many uh, aspects of that. Uh, whether the uh, content consumption can be redefined, or can, can we really look at modular, sort of what has been given as an example? Uh, can we kind of really look at our content uh, disaggregation and therefore a modular consumption? Uh, can we redefine in terms of ingesting ourselves well into the technology? Can we look at using the best of the practices around the world to impact that learner. Uh, that's the other piece. Uh, can we look at not only steering the content for the assessment, but also for a learning? Uh, that's the other question. Can we kind of put some of the contemporary set of things, which is what we're talking about, coding, computational thinking, English language learning, reading. One of the last report which was presented uh, by Asad uh, in India, uh, uh, talks about in India the biggest problem which we have is the reading and writing. Is there a way that we can redefine that how does the learner consume or write or read? Is there a way that we can define it? For researchers, uh, and, and uh, you know, Professor Singh was giving us some great ideas as to how the contemporary sort of university press or press or publishing houses can really take the content and um, make that content more engaging with the students to create some sort of uh, accreditation or some certification program around that. All that kind of stuff is really a repurposing, redefined. Okay. Thank you very much. I think uh, uh, I very often heard that yeah, you want to protect your, your print market, your textbook market and all the things. And I, I think if we look behind what, what also what you're saying, we are not a print, print company anymore. We are a solution provider. So. That's very often not seen by the people uh, who, who uh, are looking at us. So, but, but I think that's also everywhere. So, are there any last questions? I don't see. So I want to thank you for for your uh, for listening to us. I want to thank IPA and FIP for organizing this, and that we um, could uh, have the possibility.